All right, all right, all right. Shalom. Shalom. That last class I brought up, man, I was tired. I was watching it and I was like, man, you sound. I couldn't even get the word KJV out. So, I just want to say, first and foremost, first and foremost, call out like a how about Shimei was shy, waha, requa, kadash. And double honors to all the elders, the apostles, the teachers, and those disciples bringing out this 100% truth. And also to you, um, sincere Akiawa Akwath, salutations. All right, let's get it. Let's get it. I wanted to bring this out. Ben wanted to bring this out. And, um, yeah, I've, been, I've just been... Um, how does it sound? They'll wear the saints out. <laughs> They, they'll wear out the saints or however it goes. Let me get it. Why not? Because that's what's been with me. I've just been worn out. With they'll wear out the saints. What chapter and verse? Um... I'll get it in Revelation. It's in a few places, but I'm going to get it in. Let's, you know what? Let's get it in Daniel 7 and 20. There's, we can get it in Revelation. If you want it on your own time, you can get it in Revelation 12 and 6. But I'm going to get it in Daniel 7 and 25. And, and, and it reads, And he shall speak great words against the Most High. And shall wear out the saints of the most. You know what? Let me start over. Let me start over. And shall speak great words against Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. And shall wear out the saints of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. And think to change the times and the laws, and they shall be given into his hand. Until the a time and a times and the dividing of time. I'm not gonna get into the time part, but um so, so that's why I'm worn out right now because no matter what we do, where we go, nothing for us, their rules change to suit them and to suit their people. That's all. And, um, and we have to deal with that. And so, you know what? I'm always wanting to do a class on one thing. But, I'm always starting off doing a class on something else. And I think that's just the power of the Spirit lately. But what we're going to do is I am going to stick to what I wanted to do today. And what I wanted to do was bring out... The book of um, Jude, because it's only one chapter. So, book of Jude, and what we'll do is we'll go through a little bit of it. And we're also coming up on Purim right now, too. Just to let you guys know, uh, Purim would be Saturday and Sunday. I, I'm not sure about the length of the day, so don't hold me to that. But, I mean, to the length of the celebration, but... My family, we we've never celebrated it, so we're gonna um, honestly, I'll just be honest. We're gonna do a fast on Saturday, a day fast from sunrise to sunset, and then um, on Sunday we're gonna have a feast. So that's how we're gonna celebrate for it. But back to what we're gonna get into today is Jude, the book of Jude. So let's go ahead and just jump right in, Jude. The servant of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach and brother of James to them that are sanctified by Yahweh the Father and preserved in Yahweh Shai Hamashiach and called mercy unto you and called. Let's, let's, let's not go fast. Let's not go too fast over that. So, wait a second. The servant of, Yah, of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, he's a brother of James. But listen to what he's saying. To them that are sanctified and preserved and called. 
to them that are sanctified, preserved, and called. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. So wait, we got to get those words, guys. You know I'm a word guy. So we need to know what preserved means, right? Oh, this is going to be beautiful. What's the biblical definition of preserved? To keep or save from injury or destruction. To defend from evil. So, he said preserved. Those ones that, what is he going to do with those ones? The ones that, when, when you're preserved in Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, when you're preserved in Yahweh the Father, he's going to keep you from injury or or destruction to defend from evil. That's beautiful. That's the harmony of this truth. Hold on, there's more words. There's more words. Um, what's the biblical definition of sanctified? Ooh, to set apart for Yahweh's special use and purpose sanctified set apart for Yahweh's special use and purpose that's beautiful so when you're sanctified in the 100% truth that means that you've been set apart by Yahweh himself for a special use and what is that use to bring out that truth to properly, to rightfully divide the word of truth. A workman that be not ashamed, right? And purpose. Okay. So now we know, um, we know what, it, what sanctified means. We know what preserved means. What does it mean to be called? What's the biblical definition of being What's the biblical definition of being called? According to Bible study tools, to be called by Yahweh means to be called something different. I um There it is. To being called is when 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 um it's when um how would you say it? I've been these definitions are too Christian for me and I'm 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 not willing to share them. So I'm gonna have to put it in my own words. Being called is when Yahweh Bahashim Hoshai wakes you up to the truth. And he uses you for his purpose, purpose, like it says, for his purpose. He sanctifies you. So let's get that again. So what is purpose or uh, it's a, um, um, what does sanctify mean? It's to be set apart for you, how a special use of purpose. And then what is um, 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 preserved? To, to, so his special use and purpose, so to be sanctified and preserved, right? That, that, these are the people that are going to bring out the 100% truth. These are the people that are going to tell you right from wrong, whether it hurts your feelings or not, whether it, 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 what, you know what? The truth hurts. That's all there is to it. The, and, and the truth is funny, too. That's why people make fun of it. it it's funny to um, say the truth, but at the same time, when it happens, it's very painful. So, to keep her safe from injury or destruction to defend from evil. We are preserved. So, let me go back to the scripture now. So, we know what the words mean. That's really important. We legitimately know what these words mean now. So, let's start over. Jude, the servant of Yahushua HaMashiach, and brother of James, to them that are 
sanctified by Yahweh the Father, and preserved. <laughs> that is beautiful. In Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, and called, woken up to this truth, and put in a position of, of, of prophecy. Mercy unto you, and peace, and love, and be multiplied. That's beautiful. Beloved, when I give all diligence to write unto you of common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you to encourage you um, that you should earnestly contend, honestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Mm, mm, mm. I'm going to, um, I, I'm going to get this in the, uh, I hope nobody minds, but... I got to get the GNT for some of these breakdowns just for you guys. For the purpose of, I, um, I'm at a loss for words sometimes. And so when I break out the GNT, it, it actually, um, some of the breakdowns are just perfect. Like I said, I, I had some definitions right now that I was not willing to read because they're, they sound hella Christian. I'm not willing to do all that. So let's get it. Um, 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 um. Book of Jude, Good News Translation. Oh, this is going to be fun right now. This is going to be fun. Oh, this is beautiful. Okay, so let's start at three again. Um, let's go back to the... Um, Back to the King James Version. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. So the saints who are the saints, those are the prophets. The prophets that go where? To the highways and the hedges. And what do they do? They preach to the wind. What is the wind? The wind are the Israelites that have been Hellenized that need to be woken up. And some of those Israelites shall be preserved, sanctified, but first they have to be called. Okay, so let's get it in the GNT real quick. Verse 3. My dear friends, I was doing my best to write to you about the salvation we share in common when I felt the need to write at once to encourage you to fight for the faith, that's contend, to contend is to fight for the faith which is once for all Yahweh has given to his people. Verse 4, KJV, For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. You know, that's beautiful right there. They were before of old. They were ordained to the condemnation. So they were keeping the truth at one point. Ungodly men turning the grace of Yahweh into lasciviousness. What's the biblical definition of lasciviousness? Let's get it, guys. It means to be filled or to show a lewd desire. So, um, and Unbridled lust, excess. And what's excess? Um, what, what overdoing it, uh, like um, gluttony. Another word for excess would be gluttony. Um, shamelessness. So lasciviousness also means to be shameless, but to have an unbridled lust for excess. Okay, so it's really important that we know these words. So they 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 so um 
I gave, um, so there, there were certain men that crept in unawares who before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our, our father, Yahweh into shamelessness into unbridled lust for excess. And what is that excess, everybody? Oh, that's my, um, <laughs> you can give a, you, you can give a, um, a thanks, I guess, or something, I don't know what it is, thanks. And then you can give a super thanks on a live chat. You could, um, donate, you can, um, uh, there are just so many different ways that they've created to donate to these um, Israelite camps these days. And honestly, there is nothing wrong with giving alms. There is something wrong with trying to become an overnight millionaire off the backs of the other Israelites. There is a difference in that. And we got to all take that into uh, consideration. That's... That's not, a, that's not something that's uh, uh, made up. These guys are really doing that stuff. They're, they're making, they're getting the money off the backs of our people. And they should be, uh, I don't even know what to say. Because you get a bunch of money in your hand and we all are in the flesh and we all seem to think the same way. Well, what's all, this is all for me now. It's in my hand. So... It takes a very honest person to be um, a treasury. And it takes an honest person to actually be a leader of a camp. So, um, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but the elders in GMS, they live very uh, meek, very frugal. You see the uh, leaders of IUIC, they're, uh, what are they? <laughs> the Booster Club. Well, you got to take a booster shot to get in it. <laughs> but you know what I mean? They're, they're, they're traveling the world. And then you got uh, Sakari. Those guys are... <laughs> they're doing the whole um, visual glamour. The big chains. And you know, I'm honestly, I have, I, have a, I have a nice necklace. But my son bought it for me. I, I wouldn't buy this. All the stuff that you see around me, I built from the garbage out of the garbage cans. So, don't get everything the fuck. <laughs> but uh, it's not about that. I, I do make decent money. It's not like I'm poor or anything. But uh, I don't have an unbridled lust for excess. And denying, though, only Lord Yahweh and our Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. So, to get that excess, you actually have to do certain things. And one of those things, clearly, according to Scripture, you have to deny the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. How do you do that? Well, for the people that you work for, when you want that, um, that big paycheck, that big payout, it's very neat. You know why? Because um, what happens is is that you have to do certain things publicly to show your allegiance. Like like certain things like saying Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahweh Shai, and then saying years later, well the name is not determined yet. And then it grieves me to hear them say Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahweh Shai. And then almost die and then be all thankful to who? Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh Shai. And then make, and then still go right back to talking shit. Or, here's another scenario. Teaching Paul's laws, and then turning around and saying one day that Paul doesn't even belong in the Bible. Teaching Paul's laws. <laughs> Teaching Paul's letters, I mean, I, I, I so lucky, yeah, that's so funny. They've been, they've been calling it Paul's, Paul's Law for so long. It's start, I'm starting to call it Paul's Law now. It's Paul's letters. These guys will teach Paul's letters and then get a bag. And how do they show their allegiance for that bag? They say, oh no, 
Paul's letters don't belong in the Bible. Just like the name Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is not determined. So when um, you look it up, 63% of what is the New Testament is, is Paul's letters. So you're an Old Testament only Israelite when you say Paul's letters don't belong in the scriptures. But those are just um, um, two examples of denying the, the only Yahweh, the Lord Yahweh, and our Lord Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. How do you deny them? By taking a bag, lasciviousness. You have an unbridled lust for excess. And what's that excess? It's mammon or filthy lucre. Which lucre or mammon? Money. So when you have a um, uh, um, uh, an unbridled lust for a whole bunch of money, what's going to happen is is we're going to show your allegiance to your oppressor by denying the Most High and His Son. And the way you do it is by changing what is said in the Scripture. And we got to get that. Um, there's a recompense for that. In other words, you're going to get a repayment if you change what is said in the Scripture. So let's get that real quick. This is Revelation 22 and 17. And the Spirit, um, I'm sorry, let's get, um, uh, um, 18 and 19. 20, this is Revelation 22, 18 and 19. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, shall, Yahweh shall add unto him the plagues which are written in this book. Now, here's the point. If any man shall take away from the words of the prophecy of this, uh, from the words of the book of this prophecy, Yahweh shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So, when you're showing your allegiance, by denying the Most High and the um, and His Son and the Holy Spirit, how do you do it? By taking away from the words of the prophecy, words of the book. By taking away from the words of the book of this prophecy. So how do you do it? You take away from the words of the book of this prophecy. How do you take away the words? Well, Paul just removed them. How do you um, add to the book? How do you add to the book? It's when you break down the prophecies incorrectly on purpose. Oh, well, you see, the MOTB is a cell phone because it's always in your right hand or on your head. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Last year, the MOTB was an embargo. It was other nations. See, you had to have this, that, and the third to deal with it. And then they said, nations aren't people. And I'm like, well, what makes a nation? <laughs> Just a, a border? Or is it people? <clears throat> so you see what I'm saying? If you change the words, you add to it, you take away. It says that you're going to be taken out of the book of life, but also the plagues are going to be added to you. So let's go back over to the book of Jude. Let's keep going. Sorry I'm taking so long. I haven't, I've just been a lot of pressure on me lately in other aspects of my life and it's, and I'm just tired of it, so I, I I came home early today because I'd rather just bring out a class. Let me bring out a class so I can get back into the the right um, groove because you can never really feel good in this place. It's about the best feeling you get is watching your kids smile, and then it's back to the oppression. So let's keep going. So verse 5, I will therefore put you in remembrance. Ooh, though ye once knew this, how that the Yahweh, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, what does the word Egypt mean? Bondage. 
out of the land of bondage, afterwards destroyed them that believed not. And you know what? It's going to get into it, so I'm not going to spoil it. Let me just keep going. But he's letting you know that um, for all of you false teachers and false prophets and false scholars, I will therefore put you in remembrance. Therefore, ye once knew this, that the Yahweh, having saved the people out of the land of bondage, afterwards destroyed them that believed not. Man, that's beautiful. Because, um, 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 When, it go, when you go back into verse 4, remember the ones that crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. What did I tell you in the beginning? That they already knew. They, 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 <laughs> he's reminding you. You remember? Remember? This happened to you. And all you non-believers, guess what? I destroyed you. I mean, why is he reminding them? Because he's going to do that same thing again. Let's go. Verse 6. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto judgment for the great day. What's another word for angel? Anyone? 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 Any, any, anyone? Messenger. Let's use that word. Because angel, once the person hears angels, they start thinking, oh, he's got wings. And fly back. Listen carefully. And the messengers, the ones that are supposed to blow the horn, that, that it talks about in Ezekiel chapter, what is it, 33? Blowing the horn and warning the people. And the messengers, which keep not their first estate. What is that first estate? Uh, to blow the horn and warn the people so they sin not. But left their own habitation, he hath reserved an everlasting change under darkness into, into the judgment of the great day. Indeed, the word even is an old English word that means indeed. So verse 7, indeed. Ooh. So when you see her like even Sodom, oh yeah, them too. No, 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 no. Watch this. What's the definition of indeed? To, so when they say even Sodom and Gomorrah, it means it means used to emphasize a state or response confirming something already suggested. To use a further and stronger and more um, surprising point. So it's saying like, it's saying confirming, confirmation. Going back to it, confirmation, confirming as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal life, of eternal fire. So, and when, when and oh man, here we go. Breathe off the Christianity, everybody, just because it said eternal fire. See, see, there's the flames of eternal fire. Man, get the fuck out of here with that shit. It means that, it, it, it just doesn't mean that. It, it's talking about always under um, an oppression. Never being able to, 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 to um, fulfill your um, oppression. It's always going to be there. So, the flames of eternal fire are not what you think they are. Likewise, also filthy dreams... Defile the flesh. I'm sorry, filthy dreamers defile the flesh. Despise dominion and speak evil of dignities. Oh, man. Okay. Let me get that one in the GNT. 
what verse was that? Um, um, verse 8. Let me get in the GNT, verse 8. In the same way also, these people have visions which make them sin against their own bodies. That's beautiful. They despise Yahweh's authority and insult the glorious beings above. So they they insult the whole host of heaven with their um with with their actions. So let's go back over to the King James version. Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending, fighting with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. So what does dispute mean? Argue. Let's get it. <clears throat> Sorry, I was in my phone, my, um, my tablet froze. What? What's the definition of dispute? What is the definition of dispute? Disagree, like I said. Argument. Debate. So wait a second. Hold on now. To argue about something, to discuss heatedly, to compete for, to strive to win. So argue about something to discuss heatedly, a disagreement, a argument, or debate. Because when you argue about something heatedly, it's a debate. So when you go back into the book of Jude and read first. Verse 8, likewise also filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise um, the dominion, speak evil of dignities. Um, where was I? Whoops, I'm sorry. Whoops. No, I didn't do that. Yes, I did that. Dang it. Uh, going back over. Sorry, guys. I. All right. Uh, let me read it again. It, it said, um, disputed. So let's go back to verse nine again. I kind of lost my place, but it says, yeah. Michael, the archangel, when contending, when he was fighting with the devil, he disputed. So what did they, what was their, what was, so were they physically fighting? No. It says it was a heated argument or a debate. It was a heated argument or a debate. So they had a, a heated argument or a debate about the body of Moses. Durst not bring again him a rallying accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke thee. So when he tried to have a argument with the archangel Michael, because remember, Satan goes to and fro, back and forth, just like the rest of the angels. Archangel, what did, what did he do? He correct him. He sharply correct him. He, so he said, the Lord rebuke thee. He rebuked him. He set him straight. He reminded him of his order. Verse 10. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. Mm. But what they know naturally as brute beasts. And the, in those things, they corrupt themselves. Damn. But these speak evil of things which they know not. Hey, you know what? Let's just get rid of the book of Paul. Let's just kick it out of the Bible. That's kind of how, that's how we're going to show our allegiance. But what happened was, is you justified yourself somehow in deciding that the book of Paul didn't belong in the scripture, just like how the other group justified themselves and the name hasn't been justified. <laughs> Or determined. Salakia. The name hasn't been determined. So 
but these the, these false prophets, that's who they're talking about, speak evil of those things which they know not. So if you're going to say that and you're going to stand behind that, that means that Yahweh Baha Shem Shai Waha Rapua Kadash has taken that understanding away from you. So you're, you're, you're speaking things that you don't even know anymore. And you're speaking evil of righteous things. That's the crazy thing. But what they know naturally as a brute beast, in those things they corrupt themselves. Money. Women. Anything that you can see, feel, or touch, or taste. So, verse 11. Woe unto them. Woe unto you, false prophets that took the bat. Woe well, unto you, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the era of Balaam for reward and perished in the game saying of Korah. So Balaam had a, a, an ass that he rode for many years and the ass kept running him into a wall when he went to go see the king of uh, I think it's Abimelech. I, I could be wrong, but uh, he was going to see the king of the Moabites, and when um, he kept crashing him into the wall while he was riding him, he jumped off and he finally just slapped the shit out of the donkey. And the Most High allowed the donkey to speak, and the donkey said, you have struck me thus thrice times, slapped him three times. Why? I've ridden you my whole life. So this 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 ass is like, man, I've been a homie, I've been riding you around my whole life. Why are you slapping me around? And see, the thing that they didn't um that they were um coming to a head at is the donkey could see the angels, the Shaba Oath, in other words, uh Yahweh's army. And Balaam couldn't. So, when the Most High opened his eyes, he was like, oh, shit. And I don't think you guys, I think that I would probably, I would hope not to faint or just have a full-blown nervous breakdown if I were to um, have the, the honor of seeing the Shabbat Oak. And I would hope that they weren't standing and blocking me from the road, but that's what was happening. And so, Balaam got, what did he get? He got rebuked. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. They ran greedy after error. And the thing about Balaam is, is he loved to be in sin. He loved um, unrighteousness. He loved to dwell in unrighteousness. So, and have ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward. Because Balaam loved unrighteousness. He was all about that money. And yes, Balaam was an Israelite, and he was a prophet, or the Most High wouldn't have been talking to him. He was from the tribe of Asher. Let's keep going. Um, and perished in the game saying of Korah. Man, you know, Alazar actually has the spirit of Korah, because Alazar did the exact same thing as Korah. Korah and his men, what did they do? They came up to Moses and Aaron and said that they needed to step down from leadership and Korah would take over from there. <laughs> bro, did you tell you how it, by Shimmy how it shy that? I mean, bro, did you tell you, I mean, <laughs> huh, did you go and tell the most high that or you just decided that? So Korah decided that he was going to take over the camp and... Moses explained to Korah that if he died a normal death, that Moses never spoke to um, Yahweh. But if the earth opened up her mouth and swallowed him up, then you know that he was amongst the prophets. In fact, hold on, where is that? Uh, uh, it's in Exodus. Um, man. I'll get it right now. When when Moses made the earth open her mouth against Korah. Uh, let's 
Um, yep, there it is. Numbers 16. Let's get it. Let's get it real quick. Let's go to Numbers chapter 16. In fact, I'll get it in my Bible right here. It's in front of me. We'll keep this, um, we'll keep everything right here up where it's at. We'll go to Numbers chapter, um, Numbers chapter 16. This is beautiful. And it was verse, um, I think we'll start at 28. So this is number 16 and 28. And when Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all this these words, for I have not done them of my own mind. So he's saying, this isn't, you can't take something from me that I didn't give to myself. But anyway, if these men die... A common death of all men, like I said, a normal death, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Yahweh shall not ha hath not sent me. Like I said, the Most High never spoke to him; he didn't send him. <laughs> now here we go, because the Lord's gonna do a new thing. So let's see what it says. But if the Lord make a new thing in the earth and open her mouth and swallow them up with all that appertaineth unto them. So all the things that were, um, everybody that, uh, was in allegiance with Korah was who appertained unto him and all of their things and all of his things. So when you hear appertaineth, it's the people that were joined with him. So, that's why Korah's children were able to be um, spared because they were at a low age. And those children belonged to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai still because they were too young to know the difference between wrong and right. So just getting that out there. So what appertained to him was all the people that were joined with him. So, so if the earth opened up her mouth and swallow them up with all that appertaineth unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then you shall understand that these men have provoked Yahweh. Okay? And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their houses and all their men that appertained. All the who? Men. Why? Because they were joined with him. And all of their stuff, like I said, all the things that belong to them. So all the men that appertained unto Korah and all their goods. So they Korah went in the way of Cain. He went running greedily. He ran greedily after error. He thought he was going to take over the camp, have all of the glory and the riches and the fame is the problem with that. And what, what, was, the, what, was, the, what was the latter end of it? Woe unto them. Destruction. What happened? Well, um, I forget how Balaam died. But he didn't die at that point. But um, I'll tell you what. Korah and his men, they got swallowed up in the earth. So let's just... Let's let's stick to that because we can literally I, I know exactly where that's at in the scriptures right now. Woe unto them and perish in the gainsaying of Korah. They were totally destroyed. These are spots in your feast of charity. What do you do with the spot? You remove it. <laughs> when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds, they are without water. They're empty inside. They have no spirit. Carried about of winds. James 1 and... Um, let's get James 1 and Ephesians 4, 4 and 14. First, let's get... Um, cause, let, let's, get James, let's get Ephesians first, just really quick. Uh, you know, let's just go right here. Ephesians. 4 and 14. So, um, 
Um, let me just read it. I was trying to, I want to, I'm going to keep it in context anyway, so let's just get it. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, what do you say? And carried about with the wind of doctrine. So when you're being tossed around, what, ha what, what are you being tossed around with? Lies. People telling you things that aren't true. Wind of doctrine. By the slay of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait. And what do they do? They lie in wait to deceive. Okay? Now, let's go get to the book of James real quick. Chapter 1. Because now we'll bring it home with that because we can just nail it to the coffin because this is what it's, um, um, this is what it's really getting into. It says that, um, uh, it says, let's start at um, James 1 and 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask a howa that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. Do, don't depart from the wisdom that he gives you, that he gave you for free, and it shall be given him. So if you if you depart not from that free wisdom, he's going to let you have it. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, back and forth, not going back and forth from, yes, I believe you, no, I don't believe you, yes, I believe you. For he that wavers is like the waves of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the house. Okay, so uh, let's um, go back to Jude and read it again now. Uh, these are spots near feasts of charity when the feast when they feast with you feeding themselves without fear. Like I said, they they have no fear because what's what's the um, beginning of wisdom? <laughs> it's to fear the most high. That's the beginning of... But anyway, so they have no fear. They're clouds without water. They're, they're empty inside. They're carried about of winds. They're tossed to and fro by any false doctrine. Trees whose fruit wither. Trees whose fruit withereth without fruit because... When you go into the fig tree after a certain amount of time of being watered. Oh, wait. Twice dead, plucked up by the roots. But um, the reason why. Remember the fig tree after it didn't, um, um, it didn't produce any fruit. And he said to hew it down. And then he said, wait, let's give it a little bit more time. So he's going to, what he's going to do? He's going to fertilize it. What's the fertilizer represent? It represents teaching. And after a certain time, if somebody's been teaching you and you don't receive the truth, they get rid of you. They separate themselves. Let's get that real quick. Um, it's in Romans. Um, chapter 16. We'll go to verse 17. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses, contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. So, um, you've got to separate yourself after a certain point. Yeah. Oh, oh. So, let's go back over to um, Jude. And um, read it again. The, these were whose, it said that... Um, these are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit have half, um, trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the root. So um, these are the people. What they're they you've you've um, they they've they're false prophets, they're false teachers, and they, and, they, and they believe in the false doctrines. They're spots. 
So you have to separate yourself from them. And that goes back into what I was talking about um, in the book of Sirach. Let me get it real quick. But first, let's read 13. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out of their own shame. Wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. So, let's go to the book of Sirach. Like I said, we got to be around men of understanding, right? So, let's get that real quick. Go to the 1611. Um, get uh, Ecclesiasticus. And go to chapter 27. It was what I was talking about last night when I was, I mean, I was really tired last night, but I just really haven't been able to bring out a class lately. I've been out of town for two weeks almost. And then um, this last week I've been back and then today it was really nothing. So I just wanted to come home, like I said, and just do a class. So um, uh, 27 and 12. So if thou be amongst... And, you know, um, I got this from the um, Apostle Gar from GMS. He sent me this precept when I was um, being um, separated from people that I thought were friends of mine. And then they started saying horrible things about me and my family. And then we're no longer friends. So the most high, Yahweh Shem El Shai works in mysterious ways. If thou be among the industry, observe the time and be continually among men of understanding. So, um, when I was telling you, uh, um, about Romans 16 and 17, it's saying the same thing. If, if you're around these people, what is it saying? It says, observe the time. I love that. Oh, oh, oh. You know, I got, I got to be somewhere in a few minutes. <laughs> it's so funny. And uh, or if you go into the GNT, it says, um, when you're around stupid people, find an excuse to leave. But when you're around men of understanding, stay as long as you can. And in here it says, but be continually among men of understanding, saying the same thing. So let's go back over into the um, book of Jude. And so we only know that the, the like I, when I first read the verse, I said, "These are spots in your feast of charity. These, and what do you do with spots? You remove them." So, jumping down to verse fourteen, and Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying, "Behold, Yahweh cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all." To um, um, hold on, I gotta put it back to the <laughs> I gotta put it back to the regular standard version. It's um, it's so tough to read the uh, 1611 King James. I have a hard time with it. The words are spelled differently. So if you've ever tried to read the 1611, it's kind of tough. This is uh, King James. Back to the um, regular King James that I can understand. Still, the book of Jude, verse 1, I mean chapter 1. There's only one chapter, it's verse 14. And Enoch, also the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all, to convince all that are ungodly among them, of all their ungodly deeds which have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Well, I mean, that really just explains itself. I mean, what's an ungodly deed? <laughs> ungodly committed. It means anything outside of the Levitical law. So these people are, their deeds and everything they do and all their speeches are outside of what the law has um, required us to learn. So that's why it's saying that all the stuff they're doing is ungodly. And he's going to execute judgment upon them. These are murmurers, complainers, walkers, walking after their own lust. 
and their mouths speaking swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of their vanished. And that's beautiful too. Because um, <laughs> they, they admire people that they can physically see having a financial advantage. So when you guys hear about advantage, it's only talking about money. Or, and believe me, you don't get women or gold or diamonds or any of that stuff without the money. You can't have a hundred wives and no cash. They'll leave you. So you got to understand. They admire him because of advantage. You might as well just change that word. They admire him because he's rich. They don't care how he got rich because the dude's clearly corrupt or he wouldn't be in the scripture. Think about it. Ungodly, ungodly, ungodly committed. Sinners have spoken against him. Ungodly sinners. So, and all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Who are they speaking against? So when this ungodly rich man, who is he talking against? Who do they talk against in the news? You can't say Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai in the news. They'll fucking cut it off. Why? If it's such a dumb word, you shouldn't use it, yet you can't say it. They treat it like nigger. I mean, wow. But really, that's what it is. That's what it is. Um, there's a few more verses. Let's read them. This is verse 17. But beloved, that's us. The ones that are beloved. That's what I say to all my brothers. I tell them, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai Barak beloved brother. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. I want money. I want women. I want a big, fat diamond chain. I want a Hellcat. I want Gucci frames. I want to be a part of the booster club. I want to fly everywhere. I want everybody to know of my power. So these are all examples of walking after your own ungodly lust. Now, it said in the end time, there should be mockers. At that last time, there's going to be mockers. The name has not been determined. Paul should never be in the Bible. All right, Ananias, Korah, whoever. <laughs> man, you got, so you got Legion. Every time I think of Alizar, I think Legion, man. This dude's got so many spirits. I would be scared to be in the same room as him. Um, verse 19. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. So let me read 18 and 19 together. How be it they told you that there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. They, and you know what's funny about them separating themselves? Um, they, um, they, they, the reason why they're doing that is because they have placed themselves in a higher position than you. And you have to look up to them. That's why you can't say, Yahweh Shai, IUIC, but if you don't call on um, Bishop General Nintanyalaka, then he will not address you because you have to call him by his name. And it was, oh man, I'm just, that must be tough. So, Let's keep going. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahweh Shai, looking for the mercy of our Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashah unto eternal life. So, he that endureth until the end, the same shall be saved. I think that's uh, Matthew 24 and 13. And, and let me get it. I hate, I, you know me, I got to get it because I, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to say something and somebody might be hearing for the first time and they say, I don't think it's in Matthew 24 and 13. That wasn't the scripture. Well, let's make sure it is. Matthew 24 and 13. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. 
just to make sure that we were in the right spot. That way we don't make any mistakes for the people. So let's go back to it. So it says, um, keep yourselves in the love of Yahweh, looking for the mercy of our Lord Yahweh Shai HaMashiach unto eternal life. So, how, how do you look for mercy? Well, it's real easy. See, we got this book here that gives us instructions on how to live. And if we can righteously and sincerely and joyfully, with gladness in our hearts, follow the instructions knowing that they'll save you, <laughs> eternal life is what you get at the end. All right, let's keep going. And of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. So... Mm, mm, mm. Let me read, um, let me read, um, 21 through 25 together. Keep yourselves in the love of Yahweh, looking for the mercy of our Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach unto the eternal life, and of some having compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment that is spotted by the flesh unto and and, and, that, and that saying like it just anything that has to do with sin and believe me oh, i don't even want to get into it let's just say let's leave it at that anything having to do with sin now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of the glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Yahweh, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion, power, both now and ever. Amen. Let's go back to 24. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. And what is that scripture? Thou shalt not dash thy foot upon a stone. And that's uh, um, Psalms nine. I mean, it's not. It's also. It's not only in Psalms, but let's get it in Psalms. Because Yahweh, um, um, Satan also mentions it to Yahweh. <laughs> but okay, let's go. Um, this is Psalm ninety-one and twelve. They shall bear thee up in their hands lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Um, let's go to the, let's, uh, let's go into the actual chapter. Because it's talking about the um, angels, so let's get it. I have right here. There it is. So, in, I'm like looking for it. It's in verse 11. Like I said, it's his angels that he's going to send down to protect you. So, this is what it says. Um, we're going to start at verse 10. There shall no evil be thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. So, if you're doing the right thing, Nate, you shouldn't almost be dying. Just saying. And, and, and near your whole dwelling, nobody in your family should be really getting sick. I mean, we're all going to, they're always trying to hit us with something, but the most high usually just shoes it away after a day or two. Not go to the hospital, almost die, and then have to call in Yahweh Baha, shim Yahweh Shai. Nope. Uh-uh. No. So, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways, and shall bear thee upon their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. So he's never going to let you fail. Fail. So you're going to always be in this truth, and while you are keeping this truth that he's put on your frontlets, these angels are going to protect you in all your ways so you won't 
fail in the truth. Not physically kick a fucking stone and cut your foot open. <laughs> but that's cute. <laughs> Let's go back to Jude. And um, we're going to close out. <laughs> we're going to read it one more time and close out. Um, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. So, that's what it's talking about. It's not you're not dashing a foot on the stone. Yeah, what he's saying is that um, that that he's going to keep you from stumbling into sin. Okay, and those angels are going to be there with you. All right, and to present you faultless before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy. And then that goes back into Matthew twenty four and thirteen. Um, and he that endureth until the end, the same shall be saved. And what's that? What are you being saved for? He that keeps in, uh, keep yourselves in the love of Yahweh, looking for the mercy of our Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach unto eternal life. So all of this that we've been talking about, all of these classes, everything boils down to the same thing. Eternal life in the kingdom. And um, with that being said, if you've got eyes to see and you've got ears to hear, I hope you got something out of this message. Shalom.